Today I want to talk to you about abnormal uterine bleed. This can occur either in the timing, the amount, or the duration. The menstrual cycle. Let me briefly review the menstrual cycle. Normally, there are 28 days between menstrual periods. The first half of the cycle is called the follicular phase. During the follicular phase, there is a gradual rise in estrogen. On day 14, ovulation occurs. This is also the beginning of the second phase, which is called the luteal phase. During the luteal phase, the corpus luteum, which is within the ovum, produces progesterone. If fertilization does not occur during the luteal phase, then both estrogen and progesterone level decline. The blood-rich lining of the endometrium sloughs off and menses begins. Menses usually lasts from four to seven days with an average blood loss of about 35 ml. Blood loss greater than 80 ml is considered abnormal. Abnormal uterine bleeding can be categorized into eight groups. The first group is girls 12 to 18 years. The second group is women 19 to 39 years. And the third group, women age 40 and older. Let's look on the first group girls 12 to 18 years. The most common cause of abnormal uterine bleed in this age group is immaturity of the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. Other causes include sexually transmitted infections and coagulopathies and bleeding disorders such as von Willebrandt disease. In women 19 to 39 years, in this age range, which is the reproductive years, bleeding is usually due to the change in the uterine anatomy. Such changes may occur as polyps, which are benign but may be cause intermenstrual bleeding, fibroids, which are myometrial tumors and can present with heavy and prolonged menstrual bleeding, malignancy, adenomyosis, which is endometrial tissue in the myometrium. It can present with painful, heavy and prolonged menstrual bleeding and polycystic ovarian syndrome. This should be suspected if the patient comes in with acne, hirsutism, obesity, and vaginal bleed. In women aged 40 years and older, endometrial atrophy is the most common cause of abnormal uterine bleeding in the postmenopausal woman. Also, endometrial cancer should always be suspected in the postmenopausal woman with vaginal bleed. And of course, there will be an increase in anovulatory cycles in this age range. The history. For a woman who comes in with abnormal uterine bleed, a good history should be taken. The onset of the bleed should be determined. The duration of the bleed should be established. If it exceeds seven days, it is regarded as heavy menstrual bleeding. The pattern of the bleeding should be um, investigated. They are also, you should also investigate or ask about sexual activities of the woman. Bleeding that starts after sex may indicate vaginal tear or cervical disease. You should also ask about GI symptoms. And that's because with some patients, they may see spotting in the underwear and just assume it's from the vagina, not realizing that it might be from the rectum. And then, of course, ask about medications. Anticoagulants, anti-epileptic, and antipsychotic drugs 
can induce hyperprolactinemia and lead to irregular menstruation cycles and an ovulation. The physical exam. The physical exam starts with reviewing the vital signs. Of course, it should include an examination of the abdomen and examination of the pelvis. In terms of the pelvis, it includes inspection of the perineum and the labia, a vaginal speculum, and a bimanual exam should also be performed. In doing the pelvic exam, make sure you have a chaperone of the same sex as the patient. The diagnostic studies. What studies should be done? Always perform a pregnancy test in women younger than 55 years who present with vaginal bleed. A good rule to remember is all women of childbearing age with abdominal pain are pregnant until proven otherwise and all pregnant women with vaginal bleed has an ectopic until proven otherwise. Then you do a CBC and if the hemoglobin is below 7, then transfusion should be considered. In that same vein, you would do a typing screen, especially for the hemodynamically unstable or the symptomatic patients. Imaging studies. Transvaginal ultrasound is the first line imaging study for stable patients with abnormal uterine bleed. It can demonstrate polyps, adenomyosis, leiomyoma, which is fibroids, polycystic ovarian syndrome, foreign bodies, and it can also indicate the thickening of the endometrial stripe. If the endometrial stripe is greater than five millimeter in a postmenopausal woman, it should suggest and it could suggest malignancy. The management of the unstable patient. What defines an unstable patient with abnormal uterine bleed? Well, the patient may have chest pain or shortness of breath or hypertension or confusion. The management of the unstable patient continues. Establish two large bore peripheral lines, connect the patient to the cardiac monitor, start IV fluids. There should be, the patient should be prepared for blood transfusion. And if medication is gonna be administered in the ER, the medication of choice would be Primarin, IV Primarin, which is given at 25 milligrams IV every four hours for up to 24 hours until the bleeding stops. And this is the first line treatment and is the only medication that is approved by the FDA for potentially life-threatening abnormal uterine bleed. The contraindication to using Primarin, however, are if the patient has a history of breast cancer or liver disease or thromboembolic disease such as stroke or MI, pulmonary embolism or DVT. Now let's talk about the management of the stable patient. We could start with progestin and that's in the emergency room. You discharge a patient with progestin 20 milligrams by mouth um, um, three times a day for seven days, and progestin is um, medroxyprogesterone, and um, the contraindications would include active or past DVT or PE, liver disease or breast cancer. Then you could also discharge the patient with a combination of um, progesterone and estrogen, and this is would be given one pill three times a day for seven days. The contraindication with combination medication or hormone therapy would be cigarette smoking, hypertension, coronary artery disease, migraine headache, breast cancer, or liver disease. 
NSAIDs have also been proven as a treatment for abnormal uterine bleed and either ibuprofen or naproxen may be used and these are non-hormonal therapy. The contraindication would be advanced kidney disease and a history of bleeding or ulcers. And the last of all, um, trinexamic acid, which is given in 1.3 gram PO three times a day for five days. The contraindication here would be DVT, PE, or subarachnoid hemorrhage. Surgical treatment is also an option for women who have completed childbearing and have failed medical therapy. Um, endometrial ablation it may be done or uterine artery embolization. And of course, the ultimate is hysterectomy. As we conclude, what should we um, keep in mind? We should keep, um, number one, take a good history if possible. Review the vitals to ensure the patient is stable. Complete a physical exam, including a pelvic examination with a chaperone. Make sure the patient is connected to the cardiac monitor and IV lines and access are secured. And treatment is based on the patient's condition. Make sure a pregnancy test is performed early in the evaluation and CBC and typing screen should be done for the unstable patient, especially typing screen, CBC to evaluate the hemoglobin. And of course, a GYN consult should be considered in unstable patients. Most patients can be discharged and clear instructions should be given to return to the emergency department if their condition worsens or to follow up with GYN. The material presented is from the emergency medicine practice. You may contact them and subscribe or ask your institution to subscribe so you can get their monthly publication on topics that are relevant to clinical practice. Well, thanks for watching. I do hope that this will give you more comfort in taking care of the patient with abnormal uterine bleed. I wish you well. Good night.